for this. And all right, guys. So thanks for joining today. Uh, wanted to uh, share this opportunity with you guys to uh, talk about the beauty of an independent agency model uh, to kind of understand the difference between, um, you know, where we've been and where we can go and ultimately how you can uh, make a really good living in this noble profession of life insurance. Uh, not a lot of people realize that, you know, for me, uh, I've been in this industry now for 16 years. So uh, I know, I know I don't look that old, but no, I've been here <laughs> for 16 years, uh, just uh, just working different types of opportunities. So uh, I've worked on the small stuff, $100,000 tenure terms, all the way up to working with a high net worth individual, uh, looking to do $200 million in coverage, spread across 11 different carriers. So that's the beauty of this type of opportunity is uh, you have carriers at your fingertips. I'm partnering with financial advisors, independent agents, uh, career agents. So uh, one of my favorite things to do, I have a trainer kind of coach mentality. So my favorite thing is to help you guys find the right opportunity for your client. There's no one right carrier for every client. I'm going to be 100% honest. So that's why we have 40 carriers at our fingertips uh, spanning across all different types of portfolios, whole life, IUL, you know, term, everything in between. Uh, so my favorite thing to do is talk about case design because in the last 16 years of doing this, not one client has been the same. So when you combine my personal experience with a, one of the top independent marketing organizations, also called IMO, uh, to provide you with what you need for your clients, a la protection, accumulation, other ancillary products like traditional disability policies. And we'll talk about leveraged solutions as well uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, but I wanted to share kind of the mission statement, why Valor Financial Specialists? You know, when you think of the word Valor, you talk about great courage in the face of danger. And if we look at the market that we're in right now, there's so many concerns or volatility. Um, you know, we look at the last 10 years where the uh, markets have been crazy. Real estate went up, like my house doubled, uh, which is really cool. But, uh, you know, when you think about it, the stock market earlier this past year, my 401k when I was at AIT suddenly turned into a 201k. You know, real estate is running through a little bit of a term, uh, turmoil right now. The interest rates going up. Uh, crypto, we've crept right back into a crypto winter. Uh, and health and long-term care is a very big concern, uh, not only now, but in the future. People are living a lot longer, and that type of care that they need, that is going to continue to grow. And it's something that we have to think forward on uh, to protect our clients with that. And disability, you have just as much of an opportunity or more of an opportunity to become disabled during your working years uh, versus passing away. So talking about things like disability is a great door opener that people probably haven't even thought of. Uh, and we can always have a separate conversation on that. But, you know, when you think about Valor Financial Specialists, the mission here is to provide that courage that you need to help protect your clients in the face of these types of dangers that we're seeing today. Uh, we have great solutions that not a lot of people talk about but are widely used. And so when you think about what you have there, plus again, once again, my experience uh, from the training perspective, point of sales support if you need it too, uh, that's where you know I decided to create the Valor Financial Specialist. And so what you think of when you have this multi-carrier opportunity or idea of what you can do, we're gonna talk about seven different ways that you can service your clients. The last thing I want is for you to miss out on opportunity. And so when we think about guaranteed income for life, uh, there's the annuity story. Uh, the annuities are an extremely advantageous uh, conversation to talk about, especially today. When you think any type of client that you talk to, just talking to anybody who's moved from one job to another one, that's an opportunity right there. So anytime someone is separated from service, that could be a potential 401k rollover. Now I'll even show you from my own personal example, uh, when I left AIG and I knew I was starting this company, I did not want to have to worry about 
trying to figure out what applications I need to put my money in, in a mutual fund stock type of account. I wanted it something safe, secure, and have the opportunity to grow. Now, the cool thing is, is that if you look here in this strategy, what I did was I took my uh, remaining balance after I got butchered in the market and I put it into an annuity. Now, we see the assumed interest rate right here. You'll see that it goes zero percentage, zero percentage, zero percentage, so on and so forth. Well, what I did was I did a two-year point-to-point strategy. Why? Because when the interest rates increased over the last year, what it's done is it's increased the participation rate. So what you're seeing today is if I put a dollar in, the company's giving me like $3.40 back or a 340% participation rate for some of our carriers with their index strategies. S&P caps are going up to 12, 13%. So you're seeing a lot of opportunity here. And I know, I'll be 100% honest, that these numbers are not going to realistically hit. So at 65, I know I'm not going to have $1.5 million. That would be great. But on a 200000 investment, even if I come away with half of that at $800,000-ish, you know, that's still a great opportunity. And I don't have to worry about that downside risk. So... Once again, when you think about the type of clients and opportunities you have here, clients who have rolled over or have moved from one um, employment to another, separation from service, if they have an old retirement account that they're not touching anymore, why not preserve it, preserve the capital and let it grow with some opportunity? So downside protection, upside opportunity. And this is the big one. Uh, so tax reduction strategies, I often uh, ask the question of uh, why are we not servicing more small business owners? And some might say, well, I am. I am servicing small business owners. I'm talking to the business owner and I'm trying to sell them an overfunded IUL. Well, if we think about it, anytime we talk to small business owners, what's the one thing they always want to reduce? Taxes. Uh, what's another thing that I've seen uh, now more than ever is people are losing good employees to another opportunity for maybe a fraction of an increase of salary. But I'll tell you this right now, most small business owners, matter of fact, about 85% of small business owners have no retirement strategies in place for their employees. And so if you think about it, we have traditional IRAs, which you can do for anybody. Okay, so that's a way to get a tax write-off. 6,500 is the new number for 2023. Uh, if you're 50 or older, it's now 7,500. But SEP IRAs is a great opportunity. Up to 25% of someone's annual salary they can put away in a SEP, up to 66,000. 412E plans, like defined benefit plans, you can go up to $265,000 in a deduction, you know, in a single year. Obviously, there are rules and parameters and guidelines that go along with this, but these are opportunities for your business owners to find ways to save on taxes. And in this world, we can offer 401ks without having to get FINRA designations like a 7 uh, or a 66 or things like that. Uh, so you have the opportunity for your business owners to supply 401ks for their employees. It helps increase retention. But then on top of that, you also have the ability to get tax deductions. So you can invest in your own 401k. And then the employees, every time they invest, you have to put a plan together. You know, here's a sample of what the plan would look like and what the cost would be on an annual basis but it's an opportunity for your uh, customer to actually have a tax deduction, provide a value proposition for their employees. And still, you know, it's not that expensive. Now, uh, what we're looking at here is probably the range of one to a hundred employees, including the employee owner. And in this scenario, I mentioned we have various sub accounts or opportunities. These are all the fund families. So there's seven fund families. But on top of that, there's about 50 total investment opportunities in there. So uh, between those seven fund families.
and it works with all types of businesses. Now, what I would say is I'm not telling you to go knock on the door of Google or Microsoft. We're not cut out for those type of businesses. Note the word I said in the beginning, small business owners. So you think one to about 100 employees is probably around the sweet spot where we'll want to stick around. But again, if they all fit within these categories, you have an opportunity. And the cool thing is producers, with this opportunity, you can actually get paid a commission every time someone puts money away into their retirement vehicle. So when you talk true passive income, you have it right there. And when they separate from service, now you can roll that over into an annuity. And on top of that, if you're taking over a plan from a prior plan and moving it to this plan, all that money rolled over is also considered commissionable for you as a producer. So you have opportunity for money coming in, money while you're there, and money when it leaves. So there's great strategy here. And the business owner has to fill out a census in order for us to do a quote. And there's your leads. Every person in that business, they have to give their name, date of birth, how much they make, full-time, part-time. So when you talk about a true lead-based system while serving your community, this is a great opportunity to lead with. Now, when we talk about the college funding planning, we have the IUL versus 529 plan. So uh, we call the IUL a 529 alternative. So if you have young kids or your kid, your prospects have young kids, this is another great way to lead in on the personal side. Because when we think about the alternative to 529s, because most people don't realize you're going to have to pay uh, a, a penalty if you take the money out of a 529 that's not going towards secondary education. And so we have great strategies when it comes to that. We, I'm going to have a separate topic on that uh, unto itself. Uh, tax diversification conversation is one of my favorite things to talk about. Why is that? Because we have buckets where we can put our money into. There's a the tax now bucket. So CDs and money markets, if you're a Ramsey follower or Susie Orman, there's talk about mutual funds, but let me ask you a question. Which mutual fund are you putting your money in? Oh, wait, you have to research that? You have to figure out where to put it? Oh, it could still lose money? The reason why they're not telling you exactly what funds to put it in is because they don't want to be held liable. So when you think about that, you can put your money in here. If you're diligent enough to do it by yourself, fantastic. Go for it. But you're going to get taxed on it every single year. And if you're not diligent enough, you usually have to hire a financial advisor and that'll cost you money. So most people, what they do is they put their money in that tax later vehicle, your 401ks, 403bs. Why do we do that? Mostly the reason is tax deductible contributions and tax deferred growth. So you don't have to pay taxes on it today. You kick the can down the road and it reduces your overall tax portfolio for the year. But if we look at where we are currently, what we've paid out over the last few years through COVID relief uh, and just in general, the Medicare, Medicaid system, uh, we are in trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of debt. And the only way that the government can recoup that money is by increasing taxes. So if we're at a historic low for a top marginal tax bracket around 37 to 39%, and we're putting money in today to reduce our tax portfolio to ultimately pay taxes later when we think we'll have a less, uh, you know, a smaller tax bracket. Well, if the government keeps hiking it up, guess what? You might be back in that top marginal tax bracket and you didn't even plan for that. That's why the idea of tax never makes a lot of sense to diversify a portion of your portfolio, not the whole thing but a portion of your portfolio to something that will never get taxed again. So we look at Roth IRAs and cash value life insurance. Now Roths are great. You can put about 6,500 a year away in that. But when we think about that, if we have clients who start to make more and their adjusted gross income, whether single or you know married, uh, once they hit that threshold, they can't put money into that Roth anymore. They've out, They've outlived that, so to speak. The government says you can't contribute to it. 
it's a dead asset. So when you think about cash value life insurance, that gives you a Roth on steroids. You can make half a million dollars a year and still fund the cash value life insurance with the focus on accumulation and growth and less on death benefit. What does that give you? It gives you the same things that you would get with a Roth, as you can see here, but the additional benefits you have, no early withdrawals, you wanna retire at 50, you can do that. If you want no contribution limits, that's where this comes into play. And last but not least, let's not forget, we are in the business of life insurance. And if I put 6,500 away into a Roth today and die tomorrow, my wife gets 6,500, give or take whatever the market does. But if it's in cash value life insurance, my wife gets a tax-free death benefit uh, and she can still enjoy the retirement she deserves rather than the one I just gave her by exiting too early. So if we look at an example of this, how this can work, I, uh, being a Ravens fan, I picked Ray Lewis here, good old Ray Lewis. Um, and if you don't know who it is, you can Google him. But uh, let's just say he makes 400000 a year and he's planning on retiring at 65. Well, if we have a W-2 income of about 400K, they say in order for you to hit the retirement or even have a fighting chance of the retirement you want, you need to put away 10% of your annual income. So at 40,000, we're gonna put 20,000 into the 401k, and then we have another 20,000 that we can play with. So if we reposition that 20,000 into a focused product on accumulation versus death benefit, we find that we get these funky numbers like 33, 334, 40, 350, 583, and as you can see, these numbers are really weird, right? Because we're trying to find the least amount of death benefit possible to maximize the amount of income we can get on an annual basis or the total income we receive. Now, I'll be honest, 20,000 for 15 years is about $300,000. Whether I show 2.2 million or 1.7 million, someone's gonna be pretty happy with that type of return. But if we minimize or reduce the rate of return that you see here to say 6%, so it's something a little bit more tempered, something a little bit uh, more equal, you'll find here that the numbers are still 1.9 to 1.5, still a great story on a $300,000 investment. And once again, along the way, if you get, you know, if you pass away, that tax-free death benefit goes on to the beneficiaries. So when we think about it, you have 300,000 that you invest, it can accumulate up to about a million dollars. And then from there, you have about 2.2 million that you're gonna take out in total income. So do you think Ray's happy that he paid taxes on a 300K and versus the 2.25? I'd like to think so. And really where you get that from is maximum funded life insurance. Now we talk about mortgage protection, uh, this is a pretty basic concept, as we all know. Mortgage protection, a lot of people are looking for quick and dirty, simple and easy, uh, which is perfectly fine. We have that opportunity here uh, by simply offering them a spreadsheet of carriers. So if you have clients who need that, we've got carriers that can provide that. No problem at all. Uh, what I would say is you want to take people off the spreadsheet and explain the value proposition. I personally uh, have my own favorites. I'll leave that for a different story for a different day. But, you know, when we talk about this type of stuff, you got everything you need in a one-stop shop. Now, let's talk about a different type of strategy. When we think about savings and we think about opportunity, uh, we talk about solutions where, let's say, for example, sake, I had $100,000. And with that $100,000, I wanted to buy a house. Now, I could buy a house. I could buy a $100,000 house, no problem, and buy it outright. Smaller house, but it fits my needs. But if I leverage that $100,000 and I utilize that with, say, a bank, and I got a loan from a bank, and now I could buy an $800,000 house, do you think? I'll get better appreciation on my investment on the $100,000 fully purchased house or the $800,000 house that I leveraged the bank to get 
uh, using $100,000 as a down payment. It would be the larger house. Same thing when we think about a car. I could buy a $10,000 car. I don't even know if there's a $10,000 car out there right now, but I could buy it, say a Ford Pinto, just for jokes. Uh, but then we think about if I use that $10,000 as a down payment and bought a $40,000 or $50,000 car, which do you think would be a better opportunity? So in oftentimes we think about a bank helping to leverage an opportunity for us to get something better. So if we can do that for a car, we can do that for a home, why have we not thought about it for retirement? And what do you mean by that? If we talk about an opportunity where we can have a bank finance retirement solution, a la where you pay 50% of the premium for five years, the bank pays the other 50%, and then the last 10 years or the last five years, the bank pays the whole thing. This is what we call premium finance. The strategy here is called Kaizen. But the opportunity is where if I put in, say at a 40 year old male, $40,000 a year for five years, that's a total investment of $200,000. And then the bank is gonna contribute the other parts and you'll see it's about $533,000. We're leveraging the bank to help give us money so we can make more money. That's the whole idea here. And if we do this type of strategy, you can see a return like this. So at age 40, I started with about 1.3 million in death benefit. And by 65, I'm gonna get about $112,000 for 25 years or almost $3 million in tax-free income on a $200,000 investment. Now, the cool thing about this, this is illustrated with a 5.4 or 5.64% rate of return. It's also been stress tested all the way up to a loan interest rate of 15%. And it still works. It's been stress tested where they have nine out of 15 years a zero and it still works. So this is a great solution and a great opportunity for someone who is not your Johnny Everyman. So this is not a solution for, you know, someone who just gets by. This is a solution for someone who makes at least $100,000 a year in W-2 income. That, that is your, your ticket in for this type of strategy or solution. Now, this is a, a one type of way that you can do it. The other way is traditional premium finance where you have your client pay the interest only, the bank pays this, you get the loan back, and then your client has about $4.3 million in cash value at that point. This is your type of client whose net worth is 5 million and above, where we can talk about this, or we can talk about this type of plan too. So either or, but when you have someone higher net worth, you have more options. Uh, this is a case that I was working on for a bit, um, and in this scenario, the client only put in 750000 in the first two years. The bank puts in 544000 for 10 years. That's $5.4 million. Not a lot of collateral that the client has to hold on to with the bank. And then all of a sudden they pay the loan back and then they have a million dollars worth of income for 20 years. Once again, at a 5.74% rate of return. So these type of opportunities are out there. Uh, if you've never done this before, that's where you can leverage the expertise of someone who has to help you get that across the finish line. And then also to kind of go back to when we talk about what we can offer our uh, small business owners, uh, situations here where we can offer supplemental things like we can offer uh, traditional disability policies. So if you deal with doctors and dentists, if you talk to dentists and doctors, they're actually all required to get traditional disability before they even leave med school. The cool part is, is that if you can show them a way to get a more cost-efficient policy, you actually get paid trails for the entire duration of the uh, policy, all the way up to 65 or 67 or 70, whichever uh, duration they pick. Uh, you can also offer almost group-like term insurance. So if you have over five employees, it can even get a guaranteed issue with no medical. Uh, the term is not millions of dollars, though. It is $50,000 for 
you know, a 20 year term. But this is a deduction that the employer can take because they're signing a check to give it to their employees. So it's another way for retention, deductions, and it doesn't really cost a lot for the, the business owner. You can write cancer policies, critical illness policies, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, in this world too. Um, and once again, it involves getting a census from the business owner and there's prospects. All, your, all the employees are now prospects. So some success stories that we have here. Uh, so we had an opportunity, uh, agent had two cases, or excuse me, four cases where they got declined from another carrier. So you had two 68 year old adults and uh, their son plus the son's wife. Uh, they applied with one carrier because the illustration looked pretty. Uh, unfortunately, they got declined due to lack of financials. Okay, they couldn't justify it. Um, well, we took them to a different carrier that was more favorable with financials and the uh, agent walked away with $356,000 in target premium. We look at diabetes, seems like, you know, I'm here in Tennessee, everyone in the South has a touch of the sugar, right? So diabetes is always a question. When we talk about that, you have a 56 year old who had an A1C of eight, which is high, sleep apnea, and a cardiac concern, we were able to secure $3 million at a standard non-tobacco for that client with one carrier. And then with a different carrier, a 50-year-old male, 7.1 A1C, father passed away at 48. That's usually the kiss of death for anything above standard non-tobacco. We secured $10 million in a preferred offer with a different carrier. All three of these carriers are different. So that's once again, the beauty of the multi-carrier world. Now, what I also like to say is when you are first starting out, you're going into this, this type of uh, opportunity, it's always good to go with a few select carriers. Uh, I have a few select carriers that I picked uh, before you wanna open it up to everything because what happens is a lot of people get that analysis paralysis. And so we start out our opportunity, what I call a pathway to management here, uh, where if you have some newer type associate, someone who you know, doesn't quite know the ropes yet, you, know, you can start them out here and then there's numbers or percentages uh, to help them increase. There's no recruiting goals here. It's uh, if fiscally related, so it's based on sales. So associate level is $0 up to just a dollar shy of $30,000. and then you know, these tear up, there's a graph for it, but this is just a sample uh, of a pathway to management. Now it doesn't end here. It just ends here on my presentation, but there's opportunities to go above and beyond even this. And you still have the ability to have carrier bonuses. So you have carrier bonuses with, you know, AIG. You also have carrier trips. So AIG again, Columbus, um, National Life Group, we're working on getting there too. So there's opportunities for you to get carrier incentive trips on top of everything else. And last but not least, there's additional compensation opportunities based on production, as I kind of mentioned, and you can build teams based on spreads. So if you're a senior manager here and you bring some associate in here, the difference between 70 and 90 is yours. So there's the ability to grow a team Everyone gets paid well. We're here to support our communities and find opportunity for us to live, for them to get the coverage they deserve and everybody's happy. So when you think about this, again, the whole idea here is uh, my value proposition to you is providing support you need to be successful. There's a lot of resources here. There's a lot of additional stuff that we could always talk about. You're gonna see various trainings coming from me, uh, whether it's case design, whether it's products, sales ideas, how to run illustrations. There's a lot of year to go and a lot of me you'll see. I will also have times where we'll have some different RVPs in to do presentations as well. So if you'd like to hear more, feel free to email me at management at valorfinancialspecialist.com. 
you can text, you can call as well. Uh, I'm not afraid to talk on the phone and would love to hear from you. So feel free to let me know what I can do to service you guys uh, as you go out there and do the hard thing and really, you know, talk to your clients and 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 really support your community. So uh, with that, I'll kind of open up for any questions. If there are any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. 